One of the exciting frontiers of AI is multimodal learning, where AI models don't just learn from a single modality like text or images, but a combination of these modalities. Though we have been seeing good progress in this front, for example, models like ImagePoint can process multiple modalities like text, images, or videos. But the main problem is that the output of these multimodal models is a single modality, say, text. So the existing models lie in what is called an any-to-one regime, where the output is always one modality, and in most cases, this turns out to be text. We do need new models in the any-to-any -any regime, where the model not only takes in any modality, but outputs any modality. Next GPT is the first model that explores this frontier. In this video, I'm going to dive into the Next GPT model architecture, the proposed modality switching instruction tuning, and I'm also going to go into the novel alignment proposed in the paper, namely LLM-centric multimodal alignment. Now, before we get started, I would like to give a shout out about our X account, where we share daily messages on research papers and happenings from top AI research labs. So please feel free to follow us on X. Four modalities that NextGPT tackles is text, image, video, and audio. The architecture can be broadly divided into three tiers, namely encoder to encode the input and a projection layer that projects other modalities like audio or video into text-like representations. Now, at the heart of NextGPT is the LLM understanding and reasoning stage, which produces text tokens along with modality signals which helps the decoder to output content in the right modality. For the encoder though, several options are available, but NextGPT uses ImagePoint from Meta, mainly because ImagePoint naturally handles six modalities like text, audio, depth, and a few more. So it only makes sense to put to use its potential. The outputs of ImagePoint are passed through the projection layers, which are simple linear layers that convert the outputs of ImagePoint into representations that resemble LLM tokens as much as possible. Now these projected representations are then passed to an LLM. For the LLM, they have gone for Vicuna, which is an open source model and seems to be well suited for multimodal learning tasks. However, the output of Vicuna is not just going to be text tokens, but in our case, we need additional instructions to dictate the decoder as to what content to produce. So this signal is also the output of the LLM. The multimodal instructions from LLM along with the LLM output tokens are then passed on to the off-the-shelf decoder models. For example, stable diffusion for image synthesis, xeroscope for video synthesis, and audio LDM for audio synthesis. These decoder models, however, have never trained with a model like Vicuna. So it has to be aligned to work with Vicuna and the choice for parameters for this alignment layers is transformers. Each of these transformers is 31 or 32 million parameters. Now this table summarizes the entire architecture. Whatever is in light blue is frozen and whatever is in light yellow actually goes through training. The biggest problem with training end-to-end is that the combined model is quite massive and in order to overcome this problem, they freeze the image point, stable diffusion, audio LSM and xeroscope models, which are like off the shelf 
And so it turns out that only 1% of the parameters need training. The training of the encoder projection layers is, is called encoder side LLM centric alignment. And the training happens with captions generated by the LLM for a given input. For example, if the input is an image of a cat and the LLM model captions are a cat sitting on a chair. Now, because the LLM model is frozen, backpropagating the errors leads to aligning the projection layers, leaving the plug and play modules like Vicuna and ImagePoint unaffected. Similarly, on the decoder side, the projection layers are transformers. Between the LLM output and decoder like stable diffusion. For aligning these transformers, they minimize the Euclidean distance between the output of these transformers and the output produced by the encoders corresponding to these decoders. For example, in case of images, the stable diffusion encoder output for a given image caption is used to train the decoder side projection layers. And this is called decoder side instruction following alignment. Lastly, the entire setup needs end-to-end -end training or rather instruction tuning to bridge any other gaps in learning. This is where the input output pairs come into play as to what output is expected for a given input to the model. For this, they leverage LoRa, which is a small set of parameters to align the entire next GPT model for a given pair of input and output. But the currently existing datasets for multimodal learning are any to text, meaning that for any input modality, these datasets have text outputs. But for next GPT, the target needs to be images or videos or audio. In short, it has to be trained with text or multimodal content, which currently doesn't exist. So the authors have proposed modality switching instruction tuning or MOSIT in short. For MOSIT, they have created a MOSIT dataset by prompting GPT-4 over 100 topics. And these topics require planning, reasoning, and perception by the machine to answer. And these conversations range from three to seven question answering turns. And these responses went through human inspection and filtering by humans for inappropriate content and finally led to 5,000 high quality dialogues. And the proposed dataset is named MOSIT dataset. After all the training, let's look at the next GPT model in action for inference. The input can be any of text, audio, video, or image. So if the input is text, inference is fairly easy as the text tokens are directly passed to the LLM stage without is using any projection layers. If the input is anything else, say an image along with some text, then they pass through the projection layers, which transform the features and feed them to the LLM. And the LLM in turn generates the text tokens along with the modality signal tokens. In this example, the input prompt said, it would be better if I could create a vlog to showcase my progress. And so the LLM decided to use the video diffusion model and generate a video. How cool is that? And that is how NextGPT manages to get one step closer to how humans interact seamlessly with images, videos, audio, and all sorts of other modalities. Let's hope for even better models to come. And till then, I'm signing off. And as always, I will see you in my next. Take care.